I won last night. So I I came to I came to collect right now. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, give me five bucks and queen, twenty and ten, and twenty and red fish, and give me reverse ten twenty eight, back and front, and then you can keep the rest of money for me until you have money to pay. <laughs> Till you have enough money to pay me, I could come back later. I won the road march, and um, the first word march was in 1977. With the tune, hi, Daddy, how you doing? With the tune that says, give me more tempo, or I'm going down San Fernando. And the second road march was in 1978, where um, I can't take this feeling. Come, let me jam. Okay. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bandai Pax called me and says that um, Warner Brothers want to do one of my tunes with Bunny Rate. And I said, which of the tunes? And, and they said, where she go do? I said, fine, that's beautiful. Send the papers, I'll sign it. And then that's how we went, and Bunny did a great job on it, man. I could understand why a woman must have an outside man. I could understand why a woman must have an outside man. A man does want to run like rat and have his wife to abide by that. And every night he having a ball and when he reach home he ain't kissing his wife at all. And if the woman says she feeling sexy, tell me where she go do. And the man say he feeling sleepy, tell me where she go do. And she bawling, come on, do-do. But this time he's soft like soft candle, no satisfaction. So you see, a woman must have an outside man. <laughs> and Bunny Red sang it so beautiful, man. Yeah, go, Bunny. When you asked me about I want to fall, that does not belong to me. I took it in memory of my dear friend, Theophilus Philip, the late, the mighty spoiler. That was one of his expressions at the end of his choruses when he sang his calypsos. He used to say, I want to fall. Spoiler had a great influence on me because of his imagination. He had a fantastic mind that we didn't even understand. Spoiler understood that when people come to the tent, the Calypso tent, to forget their worries and their problems. People came to the Calypso tent to enjoy a good laugh. And Spoiler provided that laugh for them. It was very creative. Simple themes like um, a bed bug. That's a simple thing. I just it made, it made a big Calypso. Yes, I heard when you die after burial, you got to come back as an insect or animal. I heard that when you die after burial, you got to come back as an insect or animal. If that is so, I don't want to be a monkey, neither a goat, a sheep or donkey. My brother said he'd like to come back a hog, not the spoiler, I want to be a bed bug, just because I want to bite those young ladies harder than a hot dog or a hamburger. But if you know you're thin, don't be in a fright. It's only big fat women I'm going to buy. He was one of the greatest Calypsonians that ever walked the face of this earth. He had people in stitches all the time. He was just the best. As a matter of fact, his fingers were not like ours, <laughs> as though he was specially born for that. Each of his fingers had a slight bend at the end like this. So when he gesticulated, his fingers was like this, you know. Yes. When my mother laid the table with the rice and peas, cressel, tomato, and salad leaves. Well, the cat is going to sit on the table, of course. 
And in cat language calling for pepper sauce. This time it's his day, business with table at all. She only searching for the few grain of rice that fall. Otherwise she in the kitchen with an ugly cat. Hunting down them cockroaches, beetle and rat. In the night the trouble start, she all inside the house. Ramsack in the bedrooms looking for mouse. But the cat way has she brain, he cozy on the bed. Vas and kiss and tough but she has done it. People would come into the yards, listen to the Calypsonians. It was called extempo because it come, the ex, word extempo comes from the word extemporaneous singing. It was extemporaneously singing off the cuff. So you would tell me about my face, and I would tell you about your shoes and the crowd. Yeah, Supi say he met me in the fifties, and he was very pleased. But people that seem to know the boat that we grew up in Calypso, believe me, I ain't playing the fool. This fella here, you should take me to school. This is what he cannot destroy. He was a big man, I was a little boy. Well, it filled my heart with joy. You saying I was the big man and you was the little boy. Well, life is kind of strange. The way how everything has changed. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from? Bye. I don't talk about the caricom. The man is coming on so strong. You know what happened? Things still not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> lyrics about a situation or issue right on the spot and it's not the same thing as what they call in rap freestyle you know and and, and so there are a number of similarities between the the, um, the cultural art traditions and I would say that Calypso and rap is basically family coming from the same source same foundation now gypsy what you said right now is true but I have nothing personally against you so don't give that false impression about your brother Calypsonian. What I'm doing here, we did not rehearse. I was leaving Superior to do that particular verse. So Superior. <laughs> I think Sandy Manity, I think that means without mercy, eh? That's what Hans Sands humanity. And the one thing I haven't been able to do over the years is to explain to people how extempo, how you could really do it. I can't explain it because I myself do not know. I do not know. I, 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 I never studied the, the theory of extempo and I, I do not know how you could explain it. I have been extempo and since I was in school when they asked me anything I would answer in extempo home, you know, and that's how I am. <laughs> My first recollection of Pretender is um, seeing him and, his, and, and uh, admiring his ability to extemporize. And he's very clever, the old guy. I remember one time uh, he, was, uh, he was forced into an extempo battle with Gypsy. I think Gypsy was waiting to sort of bury him. And the, uh, Pretender laid uh, an, an extempo on Gypsy. But it's a, type of, it's a type of verse that um, when he laid it on and the crowd went wild, he just tipped his hat and walked off the stage. So, so Gypsy had no chance to answer him. You know, it, was, it was really clever how, how the way he did it. He was like, you know, I know you come to bury me here, so, you know, and that's, that's, that's my, um, that's what I remember the pretender. Words, I don't know words. 
And I, I, I the connoisseur of words, man. He has a human lexicon, man. Walking dictionary. I give him a so he says, you are the greatest, man. Anyway, I go, people want to know why they call me the genius of extempo. I think it's a gift from the Almighty bestowed permanently on the great Friday. I don't have to study, I don't have to think. I know what it is, I do not drink. If the fuck any time should be told, I'm positively the extempo king of the world. You remember Charlotte Street? And you say, that is where we meet. I was walking with some lady evening. But what I'm saying, I hope your brain working. Don't call me a louse. I remember meeting you inside a whole house. Tell me that I'm not telling you so. That's a place to go. Trinidad, Trinidad is the land of telling so. That's a place to go. Well, Sparrow, you cannot pin that on me. You really can't stick that on Soupy. I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Who sing about all them wabin? You sing about the wabin, you sing about who's. And these people, nobody knows. They're only known by you. So then you must have been the pimp, too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you make your friends and family know you're listening to the Michael Jordan. I started off doing vending in the tent. And I used to admire fellas like the Cis Rash Shorty, I, then Lord Shorty. Um, we had um, Sparrow, we had Duke, we had Arrow from the fame Hot Hot Hot. Yeah, he was in the tent too. And I used to do vending. But when these guys sing, and I never do business, I would close down my business and go to the side of the stage and watch them. And the next day, if they didn't come to work that night, I could sing all of them songs. What is that is so? I'm sure you don't really know. I don't think you know what is really I so. No words, you hear the right man sing. It's only I I used to admire Duke for his dress code. You have Shorty where melody is concerned. You have Kitchener where respect and love is concerned. So it's a kind of combination that created me. Kamala run and revise the constitution, but no court in this land could have that gravity decision. We might think he's senile and want evaluating. Sat Maraj comparing to Osama Bin Laden. I think they should both apologize. They step out the class. They better do go to Bego, or else they get a good cut. Where political commentaries is concerned, it's me. If I were to jump on a stage and sing a nation building song, people would say, well, What's wrong with Alos? That's not him. He's a fighter. You know, he's a. Well, what is he doing? He gets off. You know. So they, this is something that they expect of me. Who you call Kobo and Jackass laughing? If you know how long I was waiting to sing this lap way. Sparrow is my mentor. Sparrow came out there very vibrant, hot, dancing, swinging, moving. Sparrow would not leave an inch of the stage to be spared. He utilized the whole stage. And I remember Sparrow had a tune called Making Love One Day, where that gal they call it me, me. I said, boy, this guy is a, t a turn on. Making love one day with a girl they call it me, me. Making love one day with a sweet little girl, me, me, me. I pick up me, me, by the railway. And we take a taxi straight to Gladstone Bay. Before we lay down on the carpet, she start catching fits and rushing balling. 
Darling, don't buy it for me. Don't do that, honey. I never had a man to ever do that to me. Four of us were singing on, on Rice Road one night. I with the guitar, we sing rum and coca cola, and he passed the hat and thing, man. And, you know, and the cops came and rough up everybody. But I, as a 17 year old, end up in the um, in the Woodbrook prison right around here, somewhere right around him, over the weekend. But I told them I was from Rio Claro, which I was from Rio Claro, thinking, well, they're sorry for a country boy who come to town. You know what they said? No bail for you. <laughs> and you know what? Sparrow got away. When I look around in the, in the, the van, all the other Calypsonians there, Sparrow got away. So from then, I realized this, 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 this fellow has something. How he got away? Myself, intruder. Uh, well, yes, he's a Sparrow, so he flew. You got it right. together now is like brother and sister. It's difficult to, to talk about Sparrow because um, I think everything that has been said about Sparrow has already been said. I mean, um, this man is truly one of the greatest artists ever produced on the face of the earth, you know. He's still there battling on, on, on the battleground. When people ask what Sparrow, I say, God has given gifts to Calypsonians. He gave some the gift of the gab. He gave some the gift to study and to do research. He gave some the gift to do commentary. He said gave some the gifts to give humor. And he gave some the gifts to do um, the jump up calypsos, etc. But of all the gifts that God has given, he has given Sparrow all of them. And he has given Sparrow the most. Sparrow has the most gifts. He's the most gifted of all the Calypsonians. Most of the Calypsonians that I know of not only excelled in the capacity to disseminate information. But they were remarkable poets. There's more to life than Shelley and Keats. And I think to not understand this is to trivialize and to abuse what Calypso is about. But Calypso until this very minute, with Sparrow and others, do exactly that. These guys tell story of war. They sell stories about people suffering. This does it and it delights millions and millions of people, not only in the Caribbean region, but all over the world. It's quite important, simple though it seem, we have achieved what once was thought a dream. We have been imitating in the past. Now we have found our very own at last. No more hot comb to press the hair. No more bleach cream to make us clear. Proudly I say, without pretext, no more inferiority complex, because we know that black is beautiful. Look at the glass. Black is beautiful. It's the texture, of course. When you walk this land, believe you are equal to any man. How it go now? Black is beautiful. I said, I sing it out loud. Black is beautiful. Say, I'm black and proud. It's high time that we Get rid of this old slave mentality. Everybody know me as Billy. 
very affectionate name. I started seeing guys a little, little boy, four or five years old, rhyming just so off the bat, rhyming, rhyming, rhyming all the time in school days. I mean, I'm so come natural. In, in those days, you just go in and acclaim yourself a Calypsonian, and they, you get a chance to say if you go there. And I walk in, tell them I'm a Calypsonian. That time was a flute and quattro, and, and I started to sing. A, I'm living fine, this 1929. No woman at all to disturb me mind. I'm living fine, 1929. No woman at all to disturb me mind. For what the women want is just what I need. Therefore, with me, they cannot succeed. For when you can't come up with the door, they chuck out your bundle and tell you go. In them days, and neither could remember singing two theatre, two theatre that shows. Give me 60 cents. 60 cents and a bag of orange. Name Lori. <laughs> From since then to now, the people love me too bad. Man. One day I asked, I asked Pretender, I says, you and Kitchener are good friends? He said, yes. And I said, why don't you go and sing Calypso and Kitchener? Why do you sing in the other tent? Why don't you sing, why aren't you singing in Kitchener's tent? And Pretender tell me, I am not singing in Kitchener's tent because I want to remain friendly with Kitchener. <laughs> People love the kind of show. A German, a German man, a German, you know. Tears come out, yeah, so you teach me something, man. So we taught him Jews and this and that. And we realized that God made us all. That's the picture I like. You, you show hands some of us. Me and Kitchener. And 1946. Next year, me and he opened the young brigade tent. That time I was uh, 29 years old. Looking like 90. <laughs> so no longer I can remain. If you call me, I ain't coming back. I better face the fact that the last time I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back again. I remember all my old friends who are passed on, like Sniper, Tiger, the Lord Kitchener and the Spoiler. All the partners gone, but no more, no more Kitchener, no more, no more Spoiler, no more Melody, no more, no more Shorty. No more. So we have to value each other now, right? Blakey says something, um, whenever Blakey meets you, Blakey always says, um, the last of the best. So whenever I meet Blakey now, the last of the best. Cat the hole up in Sandy Randy, you can't cook and leave it at all. That pussy cat does make you ball. It's one way to get a relief, so they plan one night to capture the thief. 
Are they calling by me neighbor's son? And the boys to push the cats that run, they run anymore. Holy pussy, holy pussy, holy pussy cat. Who does him? It was big confusion, men with big stick all in the junction. Me neighbor Ivy stand of course. Why all you men so advantageous? Go down them big wood and go back home. The cow too big is one cat alone. The girl so vexed, man, she's at a grind. Oh, sorry that put in my Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Long before I was a big man, it was always my ambition to be a Calypsonian. But since I jump in the ring, every night I dream it, that I is a Calypso king. I was always try my best to come good, as the rest to get selected for the final test. But since I can't come or go, people feel that I don't know. The five rules of Calypso. Number one, the topic that you're singing on. Number two, you got to keep your lyrics strong. Number three, well, of course, is your rendition. But still, you ain't a true, true Calypso. Well, to whom they stop it may concern, there is still two important rules to learn. Number four, your key of orchestration. And number five, stage presentation. And number five, stage presentation. You don't need an education as a famous politician to be a Calypsonian. But if you love the art, from the bottom of your heart, learn these five rules before you start. Well, of course, you may be shy for the first or second time, but try your best and make up your mind. And if you keep a steady head using these five rules that I've said, without a weapon, you could kill them then. Number one, the topic that you're singing on. Number two, you got to keep your lyrics strong. Number three, well, of course, is your rendition. But that don't mean you are a Calypsonian. Well, the whom they stop it may concern, there is still two important rules to learn. Number four, your key of orchestration. And number five, stage presentation. And number five, stage presentation. In 63, the mighty sparrow, the man we all know, is now the doctor of Calypso. In 64, the mighty bomber, the most worthy contender, was crowned the king of that year. In 65, the mighty sniper, who sent the public mad with the portrait of Trinidad. In 66, the terror, who used his five rules very clever, stated why he come back long here. Number one, the topic that they sing on. Number two, they does always keep their lyrics strong. Number three, well, of course, they are friendition. Because these guys are true, true Calypsonian. Well, to them, the topic is of no concern. Because they have nothing again to learn. Number four, they know the key of orchestration. And they have stage presentation. And they have stage presentation. And they have stage presentation. Calypso.